This is Cecil B. DeMille with a word from Hollywood for the soldiers, sailors, marines, and coast guardsmen of America. Once again, we have the privilege of bringing the Lux Radio Theater to the men of our armed forces, wherever you may be. And tonight we have a thriller called Test Pilot with a cast that's just as thrilling. Two fine actors, Bob Taylor and Bob Preston, and a young lady who, I understand, is the toast of all branches of the service, Miss Rita Hayworth. She'll say a word to you right now. Hello, everybody. Naturally, I don't know where you're going to be when you're here, test pilot, tonight. But wherever that is, our hearts are with you. Good luck. Yes, good luck and good hunting. Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Robert Taylor, Rita Hayworth, and Robert Preston in Test Pilot. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's play is the story of the most reckless gamblers in the world. Men who toss a coin with death to earn a living. For well, theirs is the business of taking aloft new, untried planes and straining them to the limit to see if they'll crash. But when these daredevils go to gamble in the clouds, they leave others on the ground, others who can only wait and hope and pray. This is their story, too. For above all, there is great human drama in the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer action hit, Test Pilot. And starring in it, you'll hear... Robert Taylor, Rita Hayworth, and Robert Preston. Incidentally, we had to cover the town to get this cast. Bob Taylor from the metro Golden mayer Studios, Rita Hayworth from the Columbia picture, The Gay Senorita, and Bob Preston from a certain Paramount picture called Reap the Wild Wind. Test Pilot is a great chapter in aviation history, a chapter about the pioneers of yesterday who helped to make American planes better and safer and so helped to make the safety record of the United States Air Forces the best in the world. That record is being maintained right now, despite the enormous increase in the Army Air Force. We'll have thrills and romance tumbling over one another at breakneck speed in Test Pilot, a drama with a punch of a power dive, drama for you and for our armed forces throughout the world who hear these plays through short wave and certain other special facilities. We heard from one group of these boys a few days ago. Their letter was dated at a naval training station, and we discovered for the first time that part of the audience that Lux Toilet Soap brings together every week listens in an igloo. They write, There are 12 men in igloo E-17, and we listen to the Lux Radio Theater religiously. To compensate for the enjoyment derived from your program, we thought that the proper thing to do would be to give your soap a trial. It's with pleasure we report that nothing other than Lux Soap is now being used in our igloo. We salute Igloo E-17 and hasten to say they needn't buy anything to hear this program. But we're delighted that they've discovered how good Lux Toilet Soap really is. Now the curtain rises, the motors rev up, and here's Test Pilot. Starring Robert Taylor as Jim Lane, Rita Hayworth as Anne, and Robert Preston as Gunner. At 2 o'clock this morning, Jim Lane, test pilot for Drake Aircraft Corporation, took off from Burbank Field in California in an attempt to smash the coast-to-coast -coast record. Flying the famous Drake bullet, he was last reported over Las Vegas, Nevada, 10 minutes ahead of schedule. Las Vegas, Nevada, 10 minutes ahead of schedule. Escalante, Utah, 15 minutes ahead of schedule. Swinging due east, the tiny plane roars high over the mountains of Colorado streaking like a meteor through the night sky. Then, as the first rays of the sun flash on the propeller, it swoops low over the wheat fields of Kansas, 30 minutes ahead of schedule. Suddenly, the motor sputters and coughs. A spray of oil whips back along the fuselage. With an angry whine, the gallant plane dives toward the ground. Are you all right? What's 
the matter, mister? Cat got your tongue? Out of my way, lady. I'm in a hurry. Something wrong with the motor, huh? No, I came down to look over the crops. Well, make yourself at home. I'm licked, see? I'm licked. I couldn't move this thing with a derrick. Oh, that's too bad. That's too bad, is it really? All I had was a coast-to-coast record, and it's too bad. You understand? I had it licked to death. Say, where are we? We are in Kansas. Oh, that's great. How near Wichita? About 20 miles. Say, tell you what you can do for me. Do you live around here? See that house? Right over there. You got a phone? Yes. All right. Go call the air terminal at Burbank. Ask for Gunner Morris. When you get him, just yell down and I'll come. Johnny Morris? Gunner, Gunner. Just ask for Gunner. Tell him I'm calling. I'm Jim Lane. That's all you have to do. Why don't you call him yourself? Listen, I got to get these oil lines out of here. You don't think I want to be stuck in this dump all day, do you? Well, I don't care very much one way or the other. Oh, all right, all right. I'll pay for it. Don't worry about that. Listen, swellhead. You're on private property and very uninvited. How would you like to get that junk over the fence before I sick a bull on you? Say, I'm just in the mood for a bull, sister. You go get him. I'm able to pick him up and throw him right back in your lap. Oh, I know you. You're the prince. Ah, what prince? A nice, charming prince right out of the sky. A young girl's dream. And I've been waiting for you all my life. That's why no other man even touched the tip of my finger. I've lived for a prince. Yeah, a nice, polite one. (laughs) Okay, sister, my apologies. Accept it. Are you a famous flyer, Mr. Lane? I'm Jim Lane. Oh, should I faint on that one? Say, where do you live? I still live over there. I haven't moved since I told you. Can I use your phone? (laughs) Well, it's all right with me if it's all right with the phone. Come on. (laughs) What's your name? Ann Barton. We're near Wichita, are we, Ann? And it's still 20 miles. Oh, that's right. You told me that before, didn't you? Uh, What time is it? About six. Didn't ask you that before, did I? (laughs) No. (laughs) Hey, tell me something. Do all the girls around here look like you this early in the morning? Hey, look at all the hay. That's not hay, that's wheat. Oh, wheat. The staff of life. Yes, huh? You know, it's nice here at that. I'm so glad you like it. What about some breakfast? Yeah, what about it? I'm starved. <laughs> How many more waffles can you eat, Mr. Lane? Well, I'll tell you, Mrs. Barton. How many have you got? (laughs) That's all I wanted to know. (laughs) (laughs) Say, Ann, where'd you get such a nice mother? Oh, I took my time picking her out. Fresh, isn't he, Mother? (laughs) (laughs) Listen, lady, you're not being polite. I'm your guest here. You mean you're stuck here, don't you? Very smart. Very smart. I'll bet you went to school. Oh, she did. Ann graduated from State University with all the highest honors. Didn't you, Ann? Yep. Broke all the records. Did you go to college, Mr. Lane? Oh, Mother, don't embarrass him. Quiet, you. I broke some records, too. I entered high school as a sophomore and came out a freshman. (laughs) That must be your call, Mr. Lane. Oh, yeah, thanks. Don't talk about me while I'm gone now. He's very charming, Uh Uh-huh. Hello? Yeah, put him on. Hello? Hello, Gunner? This is Jim. Yeah, I figured it was. Where are you? The oil pump let go. I'm down on a farm near Wichita. Oh, fine. Drake's having a hemorrhage. Listen, brother, it was his plane that folded up, not me. Bring along a whole new assembly and a set of lines. Where to? There's a lot of farms there, Wichita. Wait a minute, I'll find out. Oh, Ann. Who's Ann? Yes, what do you want? Will uh, anyone in Wichita know how to get here all right? Oh, sure. Due west of Wichita on the main highway. Everybody knows the Barton Farm. Yeah, hey, Gunner. Due west of Wichita on the main highway. Everybody knows the Barton Farm. I don't. Hey, what's all this Ann stuff? Forget it. What time will you get in Wichita? Well, I'll hop the first trip east. Why do you always have to land way out in the sticks? Why, this isn't the sticks, lad. This is the prettiest farm I ever saw. Where do you see it? The wheat sways in the field like a silken sea. How's that? Sounds like a blonde to me. Now listen, Jim. Don't fool around there all day. Get that old pump out, will you, so I can put the new one in right away? Oh, sure, sure. I'll uh, work on it all afternoon. The oil pump, not Ann. Never mind, never mind. Well, I'll get in about uh, five this afternoon, your time. Okay, see you at the airport. Bye. Yeah. Say, Ann, we got a car? Yes, why? Well, uh, we got to go to Wichita. Oh, we got to meet the gunner, don't we? Oh, when he arrives there when? Around five this afternoon. And in the meanwhile? Well, I'll entertain you there. Oh, but I thought you had to work on the plane. Oh, no, 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 that's hard work. Come on, pal, we're wasting time. Wichita is calling. Hooray. What do we do, pal? What do you want to do? Oh, anything. Let's get out the red paint and splash it all over the old hometown, huh? Okay. You like baseball? Huh? Baseball. Wichita versus Omaha. Are you kidding? <laughs> Mr. Lane. 
thrilling. I'm goose pimples all over. Wichita's gonna win this league. Wait till you see. Oh, I sure hope so. Say, have you ever been up in a plane? No, why? I'll take you up out at the airport. We'll hire a ship. Okay, sure. Come on, Gilly, stop that old pill. <laughs> Well, how do you like it? Oh, oh, it's fine. What was that last thing we just did? A barrel roll. Here, we'll try it again. No, 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 it's all right. I, I just... Oh, oh, hey, listen. Oh, oh. <laughs> three from Los Angeles arriving at gate two. Tip three from Los Angeles arriving at gate two. Here he comes. Hey, Gunner. Gunner, over here. Hello, sweetheart. Welcome to Wichita. Listen, I'm in no mood for gags. Shake hands with Ann, Gunner. Gunner Morris, Ann, the best grease monkey in the business. Hello. No, only one this time, huh? One what? One girl. He usually has two. Oh, that's nice talk. Now, one of them's usually named Mabel. Where's Mabel? Oh, uh, Mabel couldn't come. She's sitting up with a sick cow. Now, where'd he find you? I picked her off her cloud and got busy. The car's over here. This way, sweetheart. Hey. What? Your friend doesn't talk much, does he? <laughs> Sourpuss. Yeah. Know what I'm thinking about? Am I in it? It's a wish. Oh, what kind of a wish? I'm wishing that it was this morning again. Could you do it all over again tomorrow? Could you? I never had a better time, man. What about you? The best. Say, there's a picture show tonight. Where? What you talk? Oh, yeah, but what about your friend? You want him to go with us? No. Uh, neither do I. Hey, Gunner, you're going to have a nice sleep tonight. Yeah. Did you get that pump off? No. No, I didn't. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Well, I had to go to Wichita, didn't I? Oh, sure, sure. I had to meet you, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, sure. Is there any chance of getting out of here tonight? Nope, not a chance. Uh, wait till you see where Ann lives. Cute little house sailing along all by itself in a sea of wheat. And wait till you smell them honeysuckles. Yeah, don't give me that banjo. Now, what time can we get out tomorrow? Well, I'm ready whenever you are. Well, that's all I wanted to know. We're leaving early. Hey, th there's the house, Gunner. How do you like it? Uh-huh. Ann! Ann, is that you? Oh, dear. What's the matter, Ann? There's, a, there's Joe. I forgot about him. Who's Joe? My sweetheart. Oh. Oh, well, this is news. She's got a sweetheart. Yeah. And he's sweet, too. Hello, Ann. Hello. Hello, Mr. Lane. Well, you look just the way you ought to. Hi, Joe. Joe, this is Gunnar Morris. Hello. Hello, Joe. Glad to see you. She had me worried, Ann. I thought you'd forgotten about tonight. Oh. Oh, is it tonight? Yeah, did you forget? We're having a dance, Mr. Lane. Wouldn't you both like to come? Uh, no, no, I'm afraid we can't get away. I'll get you some nice girls. Oh, I don't think they'd like it. Well, you better get dressed, Ann. Yeah, I won't be long. Thanks for a lovely afternoon, Mr. Lane. I'll make it fast, Ann. We're picking up Willie and Jean. Yes, sir, ain't no place like the country. Hear them sounds and smell them smells. Mm -hmm. Honeysuckle. Honeysuckle and raspberry. Ah, shut your big mouth. <laughs> Out there. Oh, well, hello, Mr. Lane. You still up? Yeah. What have you been doing? Oh, sitting around, thinking. Nice out here, isn't it? Yes, it is nice here. And she's decided to stay at last, haven't you, Ann? Yeah, where was she going? I was going to the moon. <laughs> I've been trying to win Ann for a long time, Mr. Lane. She very frankly told me she wanted someone better. My understanding of that's probably why I want her tonight. We're going to be married. Oh. Well, that's uh, it's nice. It's fine. Look, Joe, the prince is puzzled. What do you call him the prince for? Well, isn't he? They used to ride white horses over some hill, but nowadays they go so fast they can't see straight. <laughs> do you know what she means, Mr. Lane? No. I don't either. When she talks like this, I just let her go. Now, Joe, kiss me goodnight. I'm tired. Sure. Good night. Good night, Mr. Lane. Goodbye. Good night, Joe. Good luck. Thanks. Good night, dear. Night. He's a, he's a nice fella. Did anyone ever nickname you nice? No, why? Well, it seems to be your favorite word. Well, he's still a nice fellow. Then you think I made a nice choice. Well, go ahead. Go ahead what? Go ahead and ask me. All right. What are you going to marry that guy for? Because he's a nice fellow. You don't love him. How do you know? Just the way you're behaving now, like a little flirt. I don't like you for saying that. That's tough. Look at the way you behaved all day. One minute you're going to a show with me tonight, next you get yourself engaged to him. Then the minute he goes, you're like this again. Sure, that's right. That's me. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I rated you the best girl I ever saw. It's rotten to be disappointed. You'll be gone in the morning. Soon be here. Well, I wish I'd got out tonight. I wish I'd never landed. I wish I never saw you. Well, what do you think I wish? Do you think I like this? What are you trying to say now? Well, all my life I've waited for this morning to come. I thought it had come. Well, I was wrong. It was just a day to you. All right, you don't love me. What of it? What did you get engaged to him for if that's the way you feel? Because I'm going to forget you. Because he's fine. Because I'm going to be a farmer's wife and a good one. Oh, I'm grateful to you for making me forget my dreams. For giving me peace. Is that clear? What do you want me to do? Say I love you? Oh, not in a million years. If your heart were tearing for me, I'd like to see you get me now. Well, it was a thrill to see you come out of the sky. But it'll be a greater one to see you disappear in it. Well, you better get up early, because it'll be early. All right, she's all set. Get going. Okay. Well, so long. So long. Give my regards to Joe. What'll I tell him? Oh, you don't need anybody to talk for you. Oh, and you give my love to the Wichita team. I will. They'll win that league yet. Sure they will. Bye. Bye. Well, he got off all right. Yep. He got off. When do you go? Right away. Catch first plane to New York. Is he going there? Uh-huh. Well? Well... So long, Gunner. Look, you're a nice kid, so I want to tell you something. You're going to be glad in the end, see? He's no good. He's the best friend I got in the world, and he's no good. And you'll be glad in the end, believe me. Sure. So long, Gunner. So long. Ann. Yes, Mother? He was very nice, wasn't he? What's the matter, dear? Nothing. Why? Well, you look so funny. Oh, I'll be glad in the end. What do you mean, dear? I don't know. Well, I, I'm sure I don't either. Listen, is that another plane? Well, it sounds like it. Well, for heaven's sake, he's coming back. He is? I think he's going to land again. Yes, there. He's coming down. He's coming back. He's coming back. Anne, where are you going? Anne. Hello, Ann. I, uh, I forgot my hat. Jim, you didn't. What? You, you didn't forget your hat. What did I forget? You forgot me. What are you talking about? Oh, you did. You couldn't go. You came back. You couldn't go. Well, then get in and don't ask any questions. Let's get out of here. Get in? Get in the plane? Well, come on. Don't you want to? Oh, yes, I do. I do. Well, hurry up. And listen, you might as well understand one thing. You're going to be sorry for this. Just a moment, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Robert Taylor, Rita Hayworth, and Robert Preston, will bring us Act Two of Test Pilot. Now, I want to tell you a short, short story in words and music, a real success story. Our heroine, a woman who's far from wealthy, whose family budget must be thrifty. And what with taking care of her home and her lively young children all day, She's as busy as this. She rarely gets a chance to visit a beauty parlor. Yet everybody, and that includes her family, thinks she's beautiful. Her features aren't regular, but her complexion... Ah, her complexion. Yes, her skin is lovely to look at. So smooth and soft, it gives the appearance of beauty and freshness always. Yet her beauty care is a very simple one. You've guessed it, of course. It's active lather facials with Lux toilet soap. Our clever heroine uses this fine white soap with active lather every single day. That creamy, rich lather swiftly removes stale cosmetics, every trace of dust and dirt, and gives her skin gentle protecting care skin needs to stay lovely. 
You know, it takes just a few minutes to give yourself a real beauty facial with Lux Toilet Soap. Here's what you do. Pat the rich lather lightly into your skin. Rinse with warm water, then with cool. Then pat gently to dry with a soft towel. Now touch your skin. See how smooth it feels, how fresh it looks. Hollywood screen stars, whose complexions must have the most exquisite care, tell you they depend on daily active lather facials with gentle Lux Toilet Soap. We couldn't say more in praise of it. Are you giving your precious complexion the care it deserves? Care that will help you keep it smooth, soft, and lovely? Well, why not try regular Lux Soap Active Lather Facials for 30 days? Then look in your mirror and see. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Test Pilot, starring Robert Taylor as Jim Lane, Rita Hayworth as Anne, and Robert Preston as Gunner. The knight in shining armor has whisked down on his fiery charger and carried off the princess. The knight is a test pilot. The princess is a Kansas farm girl. And the fiery charger, a low-wing monoplane which has just landed in New York. Hey, Gunner, here we are. What do you mean, we? Gunner, I want you to meet my wife. What? Oh, I've heard so much about you, Gunner. It's almost as if I'd seen you before. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can't take any more today. Just tell me about it as it happened, will you? Well, I went back for her. We were married in Indianapolis, and now we're with you again. Married, huh? Yeah. Where's Drake? He's in his office. He's waiting to congratulate you. Well, hang on to her for me, will you? I gotta get some dough. Meet me in the coffee shop. Ten minutes. <laughs> you must be surprised, Gunner. No, no, no. I'm not surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if you got married in Indianapolis and divorced in Toledo. I'm surprised you didn't. Listen, Drake. Are you listening to me? You start out carrying with you the best we can give you and work and hope. You're due here in seven hours. And aviation's supposed to be advanced seven years. And what happens? You arrive here 37 hours late with a girl. Don't call her a girl. She's my wife. All right. So she's your wife. You're going to test that Thompson racer on Thursday. Tomorrow's Tuesday. That'll give you a couple of days for a honeymoon. How's that? Well, uh, how about a couple of hundred in advance? All right. Right. See you a week from Thursday. No, no, this Thursday. Yeah, I heard you a week from Thursday. I'm sorry, but the National Air Races won't wait for a honeymoon this Thursday. Right, week from Thursday. Lane? Yeah? Wait a minute. Hello? Yes, Mr. Drake? If Jim Lane asks you for any money, tell him he's no longer on the payroll. Yes, sir. Well, Lane, you can still change your mind. Will you get in my place? Benson. <laughs> You'll change yours. So long. Listen, Jim. You've got the idea in your head you're the only test pilot in the world, aren't you? No, but you have. Hiya, Bride. What are you drinking? Chocolate soda. Want a straw? No, never touch them. Hiya, Gunner. Well, I got it. How much? The gate. Oh, Jim, you were fired. On my ear. Yeah, Drake's pulled a lot of beauties, but this one he really dressed up for the ball. Jim! Jim Lane! I want to speak to you. Hi, Grant. I'm busy. Jim, I just heard you were fired. Yeah, that's right. Jim, fly for me. Fly my plane. I got the fastest ship in the world. Oh, go away, screw it. Oh, listen, Jim. I've given three good years designing that ship. If I win the Thompson, I'll have a factory in a year. Hey, Grant, cut it out, will you? You know I'm broke, Jim. I can't give you any dough, but if you win, the whole ten grand is yours. Beat it, beat it. Oh, Gunner, take a look at the plane, will you? I saw her. You said she was fast. You okayed all that dope. Remember, Gunner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I told you you ought to run her on dope, too, remember? She's fast and she's crazy. Oh, he's kidding you, Grant. It's a good boat. Oh, does that mean that you will or, or might or, or what? Oh, no, no, no. It's too fast. You know, I like them slow and steady. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, uh, glad to have met you. <laughs> How do you like that, honey? Man wants to give me $10,000. Yeah, for breaking your neck. Well, I don't need it. I got 10 bucks and a wife. What more do I want? $10? Is that all you've got? Yep. Oh, lovely. Gunner, he buys a ring for 600 and he marries a girl. He has $10 in the world. He loses his job and he comes out laughing. Yeah, it's all very funny. Hey, there's Al. I'll go put the bite on him for a couple of hundred. Well, I'll be getting along. Oh, uh, one thing. Hey, Al. That guy ain't very easy to handle. I guess that. Yeah. And look, don't let him fly Grant's ship, see? It's dangerous. He didn't seem very interested. Well, he will be when he wants the dough. Well, it's in your lap now. Good luck. Okay. Thanks, Gunner. Hey, 
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Cleveland Airport for the final day of the National Air Races. This afternoon, the eyes of the whole world will focus on the Grand Prix of Aviation, the Thompson Trophy Race. But right now, there's an Army Bombardment Squadron taking off for an exhibition of tactical maneuvers and dive bombing. Hey, listen, Jim. Everything's going to be great. You can't lose in that ship of mine, can he, Gunner? Look, he's flying your ship because he wants to, not because I want him to. Now beat it and let him alone. Yeah, okay, okay, but the ship's in great shape. Yeah, yeah, and if you're not here when I come back, I'll understand. Yeah, okay, okay. Hey, where's Ann? She's up in a grandstand. Hey, Jim! <laughs> There's Benson. Hiya, Benson. Hiya, Jim. Glad to see you. Gunner, have you met Mr. Drake's new pilot, the mighty Benson? Oh, yeah. You guys got good seats? Could be a nice race to watch. The battle for second place is going to be vicious. Yeah, my wife's sitting pretty. You know, you could buy a lot of seats for ten grand, pal. Uh, you're a piker. My wife's here with the kids. What do you want to disappoint all of them for? <laughs> Attention, pilots for the Thompson Trophy race. On the line now. Well, that's us. Come on. Good luck, Benson. Uh, same to you. For second place. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the big event of the year in aviation, the Thompson Trophy Race for the 10 fastest planes in America. 20 times around this close course in aviation, Thompson competitive speed event. All set, Gunner. Let her go. Wait. Oh, Jim. <laughs> well, it's Annie. Yeah, and I think I left Kansas for this. Hey, I wonder what Joe's doing now. Just giving me the laugh. Uh -huh. Well, there's a sucker born every second, pal. <laughs> Not anymore. I broke the mold. All clear? All clear. Well, baby, you can sing a song of ten grand and a pocket full of dough. I'll see you at the bank. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. I won't. Oh, darling, wait. Yeah? Jim. Yeah, what? Well, I... Oh, I got a telegram from the landlady. Yeah, what'd she say? She hopes you win. <laughs> I will. So long. So long. You don't know how cold it gets up there. Oh, Jim, Jim! Besides, the guy's made of asbestos. Oh, how can you talk like that? How dare you? Oh, you little fool, who are you talking to? What do you think this game is, anyway? You married him without giving it a thought, didn't you? Well, if you can't take it, get out. Go on, beat it. Go hide your head and cry. Go on. I'm all right. Bless you, Gunner. Well, he's got a good chance, Ann. He's awful good up there. Look, look! The fire is out! He stole the fire out! Oh, Jim! Come on, Jim. Come on, boy. Here he comes! The winner! He's across the line! Ladies and gentlemen, last year's winner repeats again this year. Jim Lane, playing the best race of his career in the Grand Mystery Racer, wins the Thompson Trophy Race! He's coming in. Let's go get him. Hi, Ann. I'm Kansas. Darling. What were you doing up there? Giving an exhibition? Oh, Jim, are you burned? No, not a blister. Well, a little bit on hand. Ten thousand bucks, baby, all for you. Benson's in trouble. Benson in number twelve. Hey, his motor's quit. He looks like he's going to crash. Everybody off the field. Field guards to your stations immediately. Pull out, Benson. Pull out. Pull out. <laughs> Mrs. Benson. Oh, Mr. Lane. Come in. Is it uh, all right, Mrs. Benson, or would you rather I didn't? It's all right. I don't feel the way I thought I would. I guess I was so sure it would happen sometime. Uh, how's the how's the dough situation? Oh, we'll be all right. You're lucky in one way, Mrs. Benson. I mean, lucky that I won. You see, Benson and I were splitting if either of us came through, but I suppose he told you. You what? Yeah, didn't he tell you? No. Well, we were. 
So I got it cashed. Here, there's five grand in the envelope. Delane, please. No, no, no. You don't want me to welch on a guy because he's not here to collect it, do you? Mr. Lane, you're lying to me. But it's so beautiful of you. I... I do need it so terribly. I mean, the children... Sure, sure. Listen, he died at his trade, see? That's a lot. Take my word for it. He died in the air. And the air was Benson's business. Yes. Yes. Fill him up here. Fill him up. Come on, Jim. Hand it over. Where is it? I'm right here, pal. I'm right here. Come on, the dough, the dough. Oh, no, never mind the dough. Waiter. Now, listen, Ann. This guy started with ten grand all in cash, and he's on a bender. Now, grab some of it, will you? I can't grab any. He's too big. Come on, let's drink. Let's drink to Benson. Fred Benson. Give me the dough, will you? Go away. Fred Benson. What license did that guy have to fly? He didn't have any. Jim. Too tough, baby. The sky looks sweet and wears a pretty blue dress, doesn't she? Yeah, well, don't kid yourself. She lives up there. She invites you up there, and when she gets you up there, she knocks you down. A nice guy like Benson. Don't think, honey. I'm not thinking, honey. I'm just telling you that Benson wasn't good enough for her. Come on, get out of the sky. I don't like you. Sure, that's her. Don't let her fool you when she looks soft and sweet. She sits in your lap and purrs, doesn't she? Yeah, well, she don't fool me none. Fire is still fire. Stuck her little tongue out of me today, didn't she? All nice and red. Kiss from Cinderella. She didn't get away with it, did she? Did she, Kansas? She got kissed right back. Yeah, and then you take her by the throat, you shake her silly, you slap her back, you put her in her place, and you give her the laugh. Dirty, scheming rotten. Darling, stop. Please. Yeah. I'm not thinking, honey. Waiter. Hey. Jim, listen. Let's go home, huh? Come on. Hello, baby. Who are you? A girl. Yeah, who told you so? You did. I don't even know your name. I know yours. Oh, I'm a famous guy. Yeah. I want a blue dress. Blue? She wears a blue dress up there. Who does? Miss up there. I'd look nice in blue. <laughs> no good, no good. Waiter! Gunner, will you take me home? Sick? No. No, I'm just tired. Yeah, yeah. Take her along home, Gunner. She's tired. Good night, Gunner. Thanks. Good night. Now, don't worry about him. No. Well, I met her, didn't I? Who? My rival. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. You met her. Oh, don't just sure me like that, Gunner. I tell you, I met my rival. She rides with him when he's up there. Oh. Yeah. And it's hard to cut out a girl a man loves when he's alone. He never looked at me the way he looked when he said he slapped her back into place. Yeah. I met her all right. Take care of him, Gunner. Don't worry. I'll stay right with him. And Gunner. Hmm? Tell him I want to be slapped, too. Hello? Hello, Ann. This is Gunner. Now, listen, he got away from me. I don't know. I've been making the rounds all night looking for him. Yeah, I'll find him. I don't know where, but I'll find him. Come on, come on. Wake up, sonny boy. Don't shake me. I'm awake. I'm awake. Well, you should be by now. Do you know what day it is? I don't know it's day. It isn't night. It's enough. Do you know where you are? No, I was in Detroit. Hmm? Well, now you're in Chicago. Chicago? Chicago. Chicago, Chicago. Oh, I don't feel like doing that. You've been in every city but Indianapolis. Hey, where's Ann? Well, the last time I saw her, she was in Cleveland. That was four days ago. I had just enough dough to wire her back to New York. Oh, uh. Oh, yeah, and uh, speaking of dough, I suppose you've got my share right here with you, huh? Look at my pants. I did. Even the handkerchief is blown. And the vest. Ain't no vest. Where is it? Ask the vest. Well, pal, it was a great race. I'm glad you won it. No dough, huh? Time to go home, isn't it? I don't know. Anyway, it's an idea. Sleep? Oh. Hello.
Hello. How are you, Ann? Fine. How are you, bad boy? Pretty bad boy. Feeling low? Yeah, been up higher. Sure. I'm glad to see you, Ann. I'm glad, too. Is Gunner out there? Yeah. Come in, Gunner. Howdy. You look fine, too, Gunner. Feel great. Hey, what have you been doing? <laughs> That's just like him to say that like that, isn't it funny? Well, dear, you've had more fun than I have. Well, I've tried. And I've tried for five days to think of some way to be cross with you. Oh, Jim, if I could only hate you. <laughs> what do you want to hate me for, baby? Oh, won't the landlady be glad to see you, though? Hmm? Why? She likes you. Yeah? She kept asking me, when in the world will Mr. Lane be home? Oh. Say, how much do we owe her, darling? Oh, about $200, darling. Oh, well, that's nothing, is it? No. But I'll bet you haven't got all of that 10000 left, have you? I'll bet you haven't got over... over six or 7000 left. Have you? Well, no. Not over that, dear. No, not over that. Well, <laughs> suppose you give me a little, darling. I'm sorry, Ann. I'm broke. I know you're broke. I was only teasing. But I know Mrs. Benson isn't broke. That was lovely of you, pal. <laughs> I'll bet you it were funny when you were giving it to her. I wish I'd been behind a screen. Hey, you knew? I guessed. Say, you're some girl. Oh? I see. I see now. You do? What? I see what you are. You're all right. And listen, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do something that'll surprise you. I'm going out and grab some wine and drink to you. What a surprise. I'm drinking to a woman. Yeah, and to your mother and to your father and to the whole corn-fed state of Kansas. Now, don't go away. Well, I've been around him a long time, and that's the first time I ever heard him praise anything but himself. But you got it coming. It was swell. Why? What else do you do when there's nothing to do? It's easy to be gallant when you're doomed. What do you mean, doomed? You should ask me that. I've had five days to think, haven't I? And don't you think, Mr. Gunner, I've tried to walk out? I've got a ticket in my pocket, but I didn't go. Anne, you shouldn't think like that because... Well, there's no way to think. It's crazy. Well, this is crazy. Three roads faces. And there's doom at the end of each. Suppose he didn't drink. He slapped her back again and he sits around, his nerves screaming. He doesn't want to drink, but he can't help it. The second road is worse than that. <laughs> He's retired from flying and works on the ground. Imagine a man with his heart in the sky, living with a woman on the ground. He wouldn't like himself very much. And I wouldn't like him either, Gunner. Oh, no. No, he's in love with a woman with wings. She's got him. And I've no way to cut her out. I can't fight the sky. Well, there's another road. Yeah. There is. And we're on it. <laughs> we go on as if nothing had happened. He goes in the next race. Another bat. Another race. Until someday, when he's not quite so young and quick, she slaps him out. You know, don't you? Oh, I don't know. I've only had it for ten years. And you hit it right in the nose, too. You just sit and wait for it. What do I do it for? Because there's nothing else to do. He gets you. There's no fun being with anybody else. But well, what's fun about waiting for someone to die? Every tick of the clock. Still living. Still living. Still living. What for? I won't do it. I won't love him that much. Haven't I the right to live my life without being tortured every second? Haven't I? Yeah. Yeah, sure. And you know what you'll do, don't you? You'll stick with him. You're hooked. You can't get away no matter how hard you try. You know that, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know, Gunner. <laughs> We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille presents Robert Taylor, Rita Hayworth, and Robert Preston in Act Three of Test Pilot. And now, here comes our young friend, Sally. Um, 
Say, Sally, isn't that a song from Maytime? <laughs> yes, it is, Mr. Ruick. And now's the time of year to be singing it. Everything looks so fresh and lovely. You mean everything has that springtime look? Well, you know, Sally, that's a good way to describe a lady with a Lux soap complexion. Why, it's just right, Mr. Ruick. And you might add that Lux toilet soap helps a girl to keep that springtime look the year round. Well, Sally, that's why smart girls use Lux toilet soap regularly. It's a real beauty soap. As mild and as gentle as... <laughs> as, uh... as a morning in May. Thanks, Sally. Yes, everyday care with this gentle soap is certainly a real investment in beauty. For Lux toilet soap is a quality product. You can depend on its mildness, its purity. When you unwrap a cake, notice how white it is, how satin smooth to the touch. Then, compare the rich, abundant lather with that of other soaps you've used. Active lather. It's so creamy and smooth, it's like a caress to the skin. Nine out of ten lovely screen stars, you know, use Lux Toilet Soap. As a complexion soap, and as a delightful bath soap, too. Lux Toilet Soap is luxurious to use, and it's thrifty as well. Millions of cakes are sold each year, and so this fine white soap with the flower-like fragrance costs you only a few pennies. Why not let the whole family enjoy it? Get three cakes of Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. The curtain rises on the third act of Test Pilot, starring Robert Taylor, Rita Hayworth, and Robert Preston. Jim Lane has a date again with his lady in the sky. This time it's a power dive, and his orders are to rip the wings off the ship. On the field, Gunner watches the sky anxiously. Oh, hi, what'd you say he was, Gunner? About 18,000. He'll turn the nose down in a minute. Gunner. Hey, I thought you were going to stay home. Oh, it's worse. I'd rather see it. Do they always go that high? That's the idea of it. They've got to get a start. How bad is it? As bad as I gathered? Remember, we don't act. I don't know, Ann. Well, that's right, don't kid me. What's he going to do? Power dive. He's got orders to tear it wide open, and if I know Jim, he'll try. Here he comes. He's on his way, Ann. Oh, no, I wish I'd stayed home. Oh, no, I don't either. Oh, come on, Jim, come on. How much longer, Gunner? Depends. He'll pull out when he gets ready, or... When the wings fall off. Let her come, Jim. Straight down. Straight down. Still living. Still living. There it goes. Gunner. He's cracked it. It's breaking up. Bail out, Jim. Bail out. Why doesn't he get out? Why doesn't he get out? He will. Give him a chance. There. There he goes. Come on, Jim. Pull that cord. That's the boy. Gunner. Gunner. It's okay. Shoot's open. It's okay, Ann. Still living. Still living. Ann, snap out of it. Ann. Jim Lane to test new ship. Still living. Jim Lane silent on record flight. Still living. Lane flies Mercy ship to Arctic. Still living. Still living. Still living. on the roller coaster. Oh, do you think you should, darling? Remember your weak heart. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and you ought to remember you're testing a ship tomorrow. Don't be more of it, Gunner. How can you think of business at a time like this, Gunner? Oh, Jim, I want some peanuts. Peanuts, huh? All right, peanuts. Coming up right away. Hey, peanuts. Hey. Oh, it's wonderful to be silly, Gunner. You can't keep this up, Ann. What's the matter? I've never felt such pain. It's like the sharp edge of a knife. I'll get used to it. You'll be dead before he is. That's all right, too. I'm grabbing what I can, Gunner. What do you want me to do? I don't know. Oh, it'll be all right. I'll be okay, too, when the baby comes. Baby? Yeah. He doesn't know yet. Don't tell him, Gunner. Why not? Don't tell him, please. Okay. And don't ever fall in love, Gunner. Don't ever fall in love. Here we are. Here you, Peanuts. You know what goes good with peanuts? What? Outside of you. Champagne. Oh, yeah. Try and get it. <laughs> Having a good time, darling? Precious. Enjoying yourself, Gunner? Adorable. 
Say, why don't you be gay for once and give yourself a shock? Too many roads. What roads? Three roads. Gonna. Yeah, yeah, three roads. Three roads. You're going crazy. Yeah, I guess maybe I am. Maybe you're drunk, huh? No, but I think I'm gonna be. There's your ship, General. Pretty, huh? Uh, pretty doesn't count, Mr. Drake. The Army wants to know how she'll fly. Oh, don't worry about her. Say, uh, how much heavier do you figure this new bomb load will run? Oh, three or four tons. That's enough. Say, have you met Lane's wife? Hey, Kansas, come here. Hello. How are you, Mr. Drake? General Ross, this is Kansas Lane. Hello, Kansas. Hello, General. Say, your plane looks like Grand Hotel. Is she a buster? <laughs> this is going to be the biggest job Jim's ever done in every way, Kansas. See all that loading they're doing? Those sandbags represent the weight of the bombs and the crew. The height record for a war boat of that size is just under 20,000 feet. Well, we're up to 30. 30,000 feet? That's a way up, Kansas. Six miles. Hiya, General. Hello, Lane. Hiya, darling. I hear you're going to have lunch with a bunch of angels. Yeah, are you jealous? Yes, darling. I'd <laughs> love to take that high ride with you. I've never asked you before. Can I be a bomb? I'd be twice as quiet. <laughs> you know what you'd be with that dress on up there? <laughs> what would I be? A little icicle. With you there? <laughs> when do you take off, Lane? Right away. Give me 28,000, we'll call it a day, Jim. Right, General? Certainly. Well, you give me for everything, I get over 30. I feel informed. Now, you just get 28 and stop feeling so good. And those are orders. <laughs> okay. See you around, Kansas. Yeah. See you around. Come on, come on. Get those sandbags in there. We ain't got all afternoon. Get a move on. Take your time, Gunner. We're ready. Yeah, you've been ready all day. Now, listen. You do the flying, we'll do the loading. Now, don't give me any of your lip rub busted wide open, see? Oh, yeah? Yeah, you want to see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the matter? Ah, uh, tell that guy to lay off me. Shut up. Gunner, what's the matter with you? You're not the guy I know anymore, drinking and fighting. Yeah, and I'll tell you why. You're going to listen and like it, and then maybe you see. See what? Come on, see what? Ah, uh, nothing. I'm shooting my mouth. I don't know what I'm talking about. Now, snap out of it, sweetheart. Come on, let's go. All set there. Get in, Gunner. All set, Jim. Let her go. You know, for a nice fellow, you've certainly turned into a crab. I never saw anything like it. She lifts nice. You'd do better if you didn't have so much weight in her. You're heavier than lead these days. Let them know how we're doing. Calling WSR from Lane, 12,000 feet, starting up through overcast. Going on instruments, north beam. There she is. There's the sky gunner. We're coming, honey. Mm -hmm. Little Alice Blue Gown. WSR Lane, new record for weight, 26,200. Manifold pressure falling. Hey, we're about washed up. Not yet. Turn the heat full on. It is full on. USR Lane, 29,350. Get up there, baby girl. Get up. 29,350. Hey, we're about through, Jim. She's what? Oh, no, she's not. She's choking to death. Next thing you know, she'll fall off into a spit. 30, 30, I tell you. Now, listen, this is high enough. What more do you want? I want 30. I won't take an inch under it. WSR Lane, 29,950. 50 more. Squeeze, squeeze. Hey, look, Jim, with all those sandbags squeeze. back there. Squeeze. Come on, what's it read? It's almost there. A little more. Up, baby. Up, girl. Squeeze. Here it is. It's coming up. There. 30,000 even. She's over. Add up, baby. Hooray. Now look out. She's falling off. Now don't let it get into a spin. Don't worry. Listen, she's off. It's okay. Wait till we get down with her some air. You feel all right, don't you? Oh, I feel charming. I hope those sandbags hold together. I hope we hold together. WSR from Lane, WSR from Lane, we're spinning. Come on, lady, straighten out. Hey, when do we hit that thick air? We're dropping like a light. You handling your controls? I'm not touching them. It's up to you, baby. Okay, just leave your hands off. I'll pull it out, sweetheart. Well, fine. When? Take your time, take your time. Yeah, I'm just a little impatient, that's all. I... Ow! Hey, what's the matter? Hey, those bags, they're... They're breaking loose. They cut me in the back. Move over here, quick. I, I can't. There's too much weight. It's pinning me. Stay clear of the controls. I can't move. I can't... All right, all right, I'll get the bags out. Never make it, Jim. Can you squeeze away from the controls just a little? No. Jim, bail out. Listen. Bail out, I tell you. I can't move. It'll be okay. I'm getting them out of the way. I'll have it. Now, Jim, please get out. Shut up. I'm getting it, I tell you. No time. Now, Jim. There, can you move? No. An inch, just an inch. Come on, Gunner. I... Is that, that's it. A little more. There, it's okay. Jim, can you get it 
out. Hang on, Gunner. I'll bring it down flat. Watch it. Hang on. Jim! Gunner. Gunner. Yeah. Uh, you all right? Yeah, sure. Oh, he's tough. Tough guy. Hey, can you move any? Sure. Just taking it easy. It feels good not to try to move. Listen, don't do anything dumb on me now. No. Jim. What? Just listen. I've got so many words. Now listen. Don't take anyone in my place. You're so dumb, you don't know how good I was. I was awful good, see? Give Anna a kiss, will you? Gunner, look at me. Here's a break for me, though. I won't ever have to go home and break the news to her. I leave the roads first. Three roads. Don't die. For my sake, Gunner. That's all I'd come back for. If I, if I could. Gunner. Hey. Gunner. I know. I heard. He's dead. Gunner's dead. Why wasn't it you? It couldn't have been you, could it? Oh, no. I've got more coming to me. I've got to get all that's coming to me. Another year, maybe. I'll go crazy first. Anne, look at me. I've got a kiss for you, Anne. From him. Go on. What else? What are you going to say? Your heart's bleeding? Aren't you going to say that? My heart isn't bleeding a drop. My memory of Gunner is beautiful. I believe you. You have no heart. You don't know what pain is. He died at his trade, didn't he? What more do you want? Oh, that's great. Go back up in the sky. That awful sky. Go up there and stay. Go on. Why don't you die and leave me alone? Down, Jim. Had your check up at the hospital, huh? Yeah, I'm okay. Not a thing wrong. Did they tell you that? No, but I'm okay. I'll take the sister ship up tomorrow. <laughs> uh, you're a tough man, Jim. Well, how else could you figure it? Listen, I haven't started yet. I'll go back up there. I'm going back up there and pay the sky back for what she did to me. I'll pay her back. I'll wring her neck. Jim, you're not taking that plane up tomorrow. You're not going to wring her neck either. No, why not? I've just had a report from the hospital. You're grounded, Jim. Grounded? Me? Well, they can't do that. They... Why? Your eyes. Grounded? <laughs> oh, that's great. That's but fine. A, there's still a spot for you. Here, if you want it. Find a desk. It's great. Or the Army. The Army needs men on the ground, too, now. Yeah, I guess that's it. I don't know. Well, talk it over with Ann and let me know, huh? Yeah, sure. So long, Drake. So long, Jim. Jim. Oh, yeah? Jim, I said some awful things. I didn't know what I was talking about. I was just jealous, darling. Jealous? Of that girl of yours up there. <laughs> well, I'm not anymore. She can have you when you're flying. But when you're down here, you're mine, Jim. And don't be jealous. Don't be jealous anymore. All right, you cadets. I've been talking for 30 minutes to you boys, and you're probably looking wise and giving me the bird. Anybody got any questions? All right, good luck. Get up there and fly. Okay, you said I want to Hey, what are you doing here? I brought a friend. Hello, Jim. <laughs> oh, well, hi, son. Mother said I could watch the airplane. Why, sure. There they are, son, just taking off. Gee, look, Mother. Come on, Barney, get up there. Oh, why can't I get in there and show him? Look at me, a man spends all his life getting somewhere, and where's he end up? 
On the ground, just where he started. Jim, when I grow up, I'm going to be a pilot. I'm going way up in the sky. Way, way up. <laughs> You'll have to ask your mother about that, son. <sighs> Four years old. And he's starting to think about girls. <laughs> <laughs> A thrilling play had a thrilling performance at the hands of Robert Taylor, Rita Hayworth, and Robert Preston. And right now, we'll ask them to step into the spotlight again. Thank you, C.B. One look at the sky will convince anyone that aviation is the most exciting topic of the moment. The records show that there are more planes in the air now than ever before. Sounds like we might have a traffic jam up there before long. <laughs> yes, what about accidents? Well, in spite of all the planes in the air, Rita, America's safety record is still the best in the world. The figures prove it. Well, even though the Army has cut the length of time spent in training pilots, I believe they've also cut the accident rate. It was done through new methods of training, methods that ensure greater safety. And that record is something we're all proud of. And now, Mr. DeMille, if I may, I'd like to say just a word about the product back to this theater, because Lux Soap is an old friend of mine. I use it every day. It's the finest way I've found to care for my complexion. <laughs> we're glad to hear that Lux Soap has had a part in one of Hollywood's greatest success stories, Rita. I mean, the story of your career, of course. Well, uh, what's happening here next week, C.B.? I think you'll be interested, Bob. To begin with, the play is the Samuel Goldwyn hit, Ball of Fire. And our stars are Barbara Stanwyck and Fred McMurray. Why didn't somebody tell me these things? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's one of the comedy successes of the year, Bob. The romantic story of a professor, that's Fred McMurray who is studying slang and learns more than he bargained for from a dancer named Sugar Puss O'Shea. <laughs> That's the part Barbara Stanwyck played in the picture, of course. Well, it should be a great show, C.B. Fred McMurray's one of my favorites. Um, haven't you forgotten someone, Bob? Forgotten? Oh, oh, yes, uh, Barbara Stanwyck. She's good, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's C.B. I know you're at work on a Mexican picture, but I think you let us, uh, should let us all in on that other drama you've been whispering about all week. Well, it's, it's no secret any longer, Bob. The agreement was made in Washington the other day. I'm going to film the story of Dr. Wassell. Oh, that's the Navy doctor that the president told the nation about on the radio a couple of weeks ago, isn't it, Mr. DeMille? Yes, Rita. The humble man of medicine who single-handed evacuated nine wounded and helpless naval heroes from Java, ran the Japanese blockade, and brought them to safety in an Australian port 1,500 miles away. Dr. Wassell has been awarded the Navy Cross. It's a great story. And part of every dollar paid at the box office will go to Navy relief. Well, that'll be good news to all Americans, Mr. DeMille. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Happy landings tonight and every night to our American airmen. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, Join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Barbara Stanwyck and Fred McMurray in Ball of Fire. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> The Current Look magazine has an article of great interest to all our listeners. The story and pictures of Cecil B. DeMille's 30 years in Hollywood, along with scenes from Lux Radio Theater rehearsals. Heard in tonight's play were Cy Kendall as Drake, Fred Mackay as Joe, B. Benaderet as Mrs. Benson, Verna Felton as Mrs. Barton, Charles Seal as announcer, Howard McNear as Grant, and Tris Coffin, Tudor Williams, Warren Ash, and Bobby Larson. Tune in next Monday night to hear Barbara Stanwyck and Fred McMurray in Ball of Fire. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Rui. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.